We are back again for another fun-filled episode of the Main Street Randy Land YouTube channel. I know you look forward to this every day. You know, my throat is a little strained because I've been hollering all weekend. It's, you know, fascination time, and I'm constantly on the microphone. And there were a lot of people in this weekend who were telling me how they love to watch these videos. And... <laughs> <laughs> One lady uh, was there with her husband and uh, their, their son. And he wasn't a little kid by any means. And the mother's telling me, all I do is hear your voice all day long as he's watching my videos. So here's some more for you, Mom, because we're over here at Randy Land and we're talking about more stuff again. So... You know, the cameraman always spots these things and I just walk right by him because I'm so used to it. I live with this stuff. So it's like, you know, it, it's not new to me. It's, you know, I acquired them years ago and, you know, I know they're here and I'm comfortable with that. So I don't really pay attention to it. But really everything is neat. And I know all you people who are watching this stuff are always like, what's that in the background? What's that in the background? Well, let's focus on what we're talking about because you're always saying, what's that? What's that? What's that? Well, we'll get to that that someday, I'm sure, I don't know. But as we were walking in the front doors here, which the big, the big red circles with the RL, and, and if you can't figure out what RL is, it's Randy Land. What's the matter with you? You know, this is simple, simple diagnosis, okay. Well, <clears throat> as we walk by our giant gumball machine, I want my gumballs, ha, ha, ha. And he talks like that, too, because he has my voice, and it was very big bass woofers in there that would, you know, talk about his gumballs. Didn't we talk about that on another episode? I thought we did. We didn't talk about my gumball machine? Well, I guess we get distracted and talk about the gumball machine now, you see? This is how things happen. You walk by stuff, and you start talking. Well, the giant gumball machine. You know, these got to be a big hit at one point, and I would guess it would be in the late 80s you would start seeing them around and they appeared in the uh, the rest stops over on the uh, the highways and whatnot and everybody would go get the big giant gumballs well as much as you would want to get a gumball from the giant gumball machine it's better to get the giant gumball machine itself so when the, you're gonna get one of these things they had different models of course you have to get the biggest one you can't get one that's just a big gumball machine you have to get the biggest gumball machine that was available at the time and I don't know if they've made any bigger ones here but you know the, the problem with them in is that whenever you get something that's the biggest it's heavy. It's very heavy, and they're hard to move. And they're not really, you know, friendly for hand trucks being round on the bottom or anything of this nature. So they're difficult to move. And when it comes, of course, the globe isn't on it. It's just the main section on the bottom, and then the globe is, you know, separate boxes. You got to put it together. And then you got to add your gumballs. Now, one of the big defects in giant gumball machines is the amount of gumballs you have to put in that giant gumball machine. I mean, gumballs are expensive. People think, oh, you get them, 10 of them for a half a penny. No, no, you don't. You could never get 10 of them for half a penny. They are expensive. And if, especially if you get the big gumballs, because it's a big gumball machine, you don't want to give little gumballs. So even back in the day, these gumballs probably cost like seven, eight cents a piece in bulk. Well, you're vending it for a quarter. So what are you making on a gumball machine? You know, you're making 16 cents, 17 cents on a gumball. Okay, well, <clears throat> you gotta sell a lot of gumballs in order to pay for your giant gumball machine. And I don't even remember what I paid for it, but it, was, it wasn't hundreds, it was several thousands of dollars I paid for a giant gumball machine. Why would you pay thousands of dollars? Because I wanted the giant gumball machine. And where did I put it? <clears throat> right smack in the center of the walkway when you walked into Lucky's Fascination. Svensson's ice cream was on the one side. My Candyland stand was on the other side. And I had my giant gumball machine right in the walkway. It was a perfect fit. 
but you can't stop there. You have to have more features to it. So, you know, you have to add your Randy touches to it. So I made my giant gumball machine talk. So periodically people would go by and I gave it a giant speaker inside that would vibrate the whole machine with a very heavy amplifier and it would say, buy my gumball. <laughs> People would be like, is that talking to me? And they would stop and they'd buy a gumball. So I, I you know, would have to pay back the gumball machine and, and the, the amplifiers and the speakers and all stuff like that, you know, 16 cents at a time with gumball machines. I don't think I ever really paid it back because this is one of those things that kind of never ends. So then you got to buy all these gumballs and fill it in. Now, we were talking about poor planning. And this is one of the things that happens when people make giant big gumball machines. You have to say to yourself, how many gumballs are in that giant gumball machine? Well, there's quite a few. I don't know. I didn't count them. Um, cases and cases and cases of gumballs. But what would happen is as people would buy gumballs, the level of gumballs would go down. And if you filled the gumball machine to the top, as you see it's pretty full, it would take years, <clears throat> years and years and years to sell all these gumballs. So a lot of operators wouldn't fill the whole globe with gumballs. But then it kind of defeats the purpose of having a giant gumball machine if you walk by and you only see gumballs like up to here in the gumball machine because you see this big empty globe on the top and it doesn't look right. So I got a special kit from one of the companies to fit inside my globe that is an inner globe to actually put the gumballs that are going to vend. Well, why would you do that? Well, here's the thing. If I fill this with gumballs and they're there for years, you're going to get stale gumballs. If you ever have a stale gumball, you put it in your mouth, you break a tooth, they're hard. Yeah, they soften up as you, you gum away at it. But you know what? The nice, soft, supple gumballs, they're marvelous. And you'd buy a second one, so I'd make another 16 cents. Well, if you look on the top beneath the dust, you'll see an inner white globe. And that is actually the inner globe where I'm gonna load my gumballs. See all these little tricks that you're learning on the Main Street Randy Land YouTube channel? You load your gumballs in the top and they're inside the inner globe. Those gumballs are the gumballs you're going to receive when you put your coin in there. You're never going to get one of these gumballs that are on the outside. These are sacrificial gumballs that are there to make it look full. So the gumballs are lining up between the two globes, between the inside and the outside globe. And there's still many, many, many thousands of gumballs that are being wasted in there for display purposes. So over the time, of course, sitting here by the door, they've gotten somewhat faded, like that used to be a nice deep green. It's not green anymore, it's kind of marbleized. The orange held up white, the white, the pink held up very nice. But those other colors, now look at this weird gumball. Look at that, how do you explain a gumball with a breech on its side like that? And look, here's another one like that. How does this happen? Well. I'll tell you, here's the example right here. You see here? You see the orange one and the yellow one? But that blue one, that's an odd shape. You know why? Because that's not a gumball. That is a light bulb. Because Randy always has to have something special with his gumball machines and everything else he does. So there are light bulbs. You see as they're going down a little bit, you're not supposed to see the upper globe. They're kind of settled. But you'll see there's light bulbs. Christmas lights, yes, incandescent. Christmas lights, they still made them. I used to go to Kmart and be able to get them. And yes, there aren't even any Kmarts anymore. And you can't even get those Christmas bulbs anymore. So what I did was I went to probably at that time like Channel Lumber because there weren't any Home Depots. We're talking many years ago. Yes, I'm old, old as the mountains, old as the pyramids. So you get these... <clears throat> 
threaded rod kits with a light socket on it for fixing lamps, okay? And you mount them to the inner globe like spikes coming out in different directions. So my inner globe is filled with wires, which of course is not normal. People don't get their inner globes filled with wires and light sockets sticking around. But I did this all around my globe so that it was measured just right to extend out light bulbs that would be near the surface so that the thing could have illumination. You see? So then I had to connect that to my giant amplification speakers so that they would voice activate as it would say, by my gumballs, it, the lights would blink. By my gumballs, just like the robot on Lost in Space and his, his light would light up, you know, Will Robinson, danger, danger, Will Robinson. What happens is light bulbs get hot. <laughs> now, it was made specifically so those light bulbs were not on all the time, okay? So they wouldn't get hot, hot enough to melt my gumballs. So how did the gumballs get melted? This goes back to when you have people help you and they work for you, okay? There was a time that I actually had people work for me because when I was in Seaside, I had the ice cream stand and I had the candy land stand and fascination. We used to collect by hand in the beginning. You had to hire people. So I had some kids working for me at the ice cream stand where I had my gumball machine. And the ice cream stand used to open earlier than fascination did. So the main guy would get the keys to open the ice cream stand and prep up the ice cream stand. And they'd open by 11 o'clock in the morning and fascination would maybe open at 12 or one. Little did I know that when you hire these people who do not have the same feeling for things as you do, they do stuff when you're not around. Well, what could they do to hurt your gumball machine? Well, as it turns out, Seaside was a unique situation because the basements were shallow and they were right on it was it was easy access for stuff so rather than putting my heavy amplifiers inside my gumball machine i externally mounted them in the basement because they would generate heat and i figured the heat will come up and it'll melt my gumball so i'm planning ahead see i'm looking at it very analytically as a good engineer would do so to conquer that heat problem, I put my amplifiers downstairs in the basement and just ran the wire through the floor up into the bottom of the gumball machine and it would activate and I had my electronics downstairs and the tape had special digital signal on it that would activate the voice activation circuits in order to make the lights go on in synchronization with my audio. Kind of like the way audio animatronic shows work. So the guy working for my ice cream stand in the morning decided, well, I like to listen to music. So he comes in and he pops in his favorite music cassette into my gumball machine mechanisms downstairs in the basement so that he can blare his horrible, horrible devil music through my giant woofers of my gumball machine. Of course, the circuitry is not designed for regular tapes. It was designed for my gumball machine tape. So it locked on all the lights. So they were on constant as he's listening to Metallica or some other kind of horrible thing, blah, 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 coming out of the gumball machine and I'm not there to stop it. And then, I see my gumballs are melted around the lights. Literally hundreds of dollars of damage created by that. Hundreds. Because I would have to throw away all these gumballs because I'd have to somehow or another open it. They'd go all over the floor uh, to get those gumballs out to change them. And I did it. I changed all the gumballs. I had to replace the bulbs that had gum melted on them and all things of this nature, to all the time it took. Uh, 
And then about a year or so later, I had somebody else who was working who did the same thing. Can you imagine sacrilege to harm the gumball machine? And so it has remained that way since because I'm not going to do that again. And then shortly after, we didn't have the stand anymore because we lost the lease in Seaside, and I had to move my gumball machine, which, how do you move a gumball machine loaded with gumballs? You gotta go under with your shoulder, and you gotta lift. Ah! Ah! You gotta lift a giant gumball machine. And you kinda roll it this way and roll it that way. And it's not fun, it's not easy, but this is the story of the giant gumball. So you see, Nothing is simple. I just can't have a gumball machine. It has to be a giant gumball machine. And then it's not good enough. It has to have an inner dome so it always looks full. And then you have to add lights and you have to add voice activated sound. And all your best plans and your dreams are foiled by these, these rock and roll, metal, Metallica loving crazies who would blast that horrible music through my giant gumball machine. You see, this is the plight of dealing with people. I'm so much better off that I do everything myself because I know that would never happen in my world. So here we have my gumball machine, still with his original gumballs, his Control units are inside of him so that it can be utilized. And if I set it up someplace else, I can get it out. There's an access door on the side here that you can actually get to as a platform. But you can't get inside there. But this is one of those things. It probably still has some quarters in it because they're really hard to empty, especially when you move it. They bounce around. They go all over. And you can't reach it sticking your hand in. You can't reach it to the other side. So the story of the giant gumball machine. I don't even know where that key is, the Victor key, to get that out and change it. It might be hiding inside if I have one of my regular locks on it. I don't know. I hope I don't have to drill it out someday in order to go back to my gumballs. And you know what? If I had a quarter, probably they're still good. Might take an hour before it, it, it's soft. Don't you even, don't you even dare. He's reaching in his pocket. I'm not going to try it. Don't bother. <laughs> we'll see you next time on the Main Street Randy Land YouTube channel. Bye, guys. Want a gumball? Buy my gumballs. Ha, 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 ha.